If you are watching this video, most likely you or somebody you know has been diagnosed as having a L4-5 spondylolisthesis. There are several different types of spondylolisthesis, and I am speaking specifically about a degenerative L4-5 spondylolisthesis. Degenerative conditions are those conditions that occur over the course of time, repetitive trauma, wear and tear. In other words, I'm talking about aging. <laughs> Before I go into any more details about a spondylolisthesis, I'm going to review the normal anatomy. By understanding normal, you will better be able to understand the abnormal situation of a spondylolisthesis. Here, we're looking at the lumbar spine or lower back from the side. This would be the front, this would be the back, the stomach would be here, this is the small of your back, and the seat belt would hit you at about this point. The lumbar spine is composed of five bones known as vertebral bodies. From the side, these vertebral bodies look like boxes. In between those boxes, you have the discs. At each level, you have a nerve that exits the spine, and all of these nerves join together in the buttock to form one big nerve known as the sciatic nerve. Therefore, any pain that radiates from the back into the buttock and down the leg is called sciatica. Some of the specific symptoms with sciatica will change depending upon the level and which nerve is being pinched, but we'll speak more about that later. Typically, all of these bones are stacked one on top of the other like boxes, all in a line. Down the middle of these bones travels, there's a hole and it produces a canal. It is through this canal that the spinal cord travels down the spine, into the buttock and down the legs. If one bone moves over the top of the other bone, then you develop spinal malalignment. This spinal malalignment is known as a spondylolisthesis. So in other words, each bone has a hole. The bones line up. If one bone slips over the other one, it's going to diminish the space available for this uh, spinal cord, and that's going to produce pain in the lower back, buttock, and down the leg because the spinal cord is going to be pinched. We see this using an MRI machine, which produces the, a picture of the internal anatomy of the human body using magnets. An MRI allows us to see soft tissue like nerves and discs. It's not the same as a CT scan. A CT scan is a fancy x-ray, and with x-rays you can only see bone. What you have is you have a pinched nerve. Therefore, you need an MRI. Here we see the lumbar spine from the side. All of the bones line up. That means there is sufficient space for the spinal cord. Here you see where one bone has slipped on the other bone. It's obvious that at this point, the spinal cord is being pinched. This slippage is called a spondylolisthesis. We measure the amount of pinching by looking at the nerves by what I call an airplane view. And here you see the MRI from above. This is the front, this is the back, this is the right side, that's the left side. And basically what we're interested in is just this specific area. That's the sciatic nerve. Here you see an example of normal. The spinal cord has sufficient space. Here you see an area where the bone is slipped and the sciatic, the spinal cord or sciatic nerve is being pinched or compressed. When the nerve is compressed, it can cause back pain, buttock pain, pain down the leg, and that's called sciatica. 
In this case, we are looking at a degenerative L4-5 spondylolisthesis. What are the risk factors for developing spinal malalignment? Well, one, for one thing, it's not uncommon for somebody to be born with what's called a tra transitional L5 bone. And that means the lowest disc, or the L5-S1 disc, is stiff and does not move. The fact that it does not move places stress, uh, stress on the L4-5 level, which can um, break down and slip. Some interesting facts that you can tell your friends and neighbors. Um, spondylolisthesis is eight times more common in women than men, and it's five times more common at L4-5 than the next most common level, which is L5-S1. Patients typically present with back, buttock, and leg pain, and 75 to 80 percent of the time it's on the left side. With an L4-5 spondylolisthesis, the most common nerve affected is the L5 nerve. This goes down the back, buttock, down the back of the thigh, down the front of the leg, and to the top of the foot. If it is severe enough, it's going to affect the muscles that pull your foot up, so you'll get a foot drop. We diagnose this with x-rays that involve flexion extension films, looking for instability, and an MRI. If you have a pacemaker and cannot have an MRI, you will have a myelogram and CT scan. Because a CT scan only shows bones, as we previously discussed, you have to also have an injection of dye into the back. That's called the myelogram. The treatment of a spondylolisthesis is based upon the degree of symptoms the patient is having. And the treatment can be divided into three different phases. Number one, for minor symptoms, we can use medications and physical therapy. Physical therapy is used even if the patient is asymptomatic because it can be used as a preventative method to prevent the development of a spondylolisthesis. The medications are divided into three different types. It's a degenerative condition, so we use an anti-inflammatory medication, an anti-arthritis medication such as ibuprofen or naproxen. The second type of medication that we use are those medications that almost function like vitamins for the nerves, such as Neurontin or Lyrica. These medications typically are taken at night and they have the added benefit of helping the patient sleep. And remember, almost everything is worse, worse at night. A dripping faucet that doesn't bug you in the daytime will drive you crazy at night. And the same is true for pain. The final and third medication are pain medications. It's not a bad idea to have a pain medication on hand that you can take when you have severe pain. The first two medications, the anti-inflammatory medication and the medication that functions like a vitamin for the nerves, those are taken routinely. The pain medication is only taken when you have severe pain. The second phase of treatment involves injections. If medication and physical therapy has, have not helped, or if you have too much pain to engage in physical therapy, then we consider injections. And that's true for any degenerative condition in the body. If you go to the doctor with a bad knee and he gives you pills and exercise and you go back saying, hey, the pills and the exercise didn't help, then he's gonna say, let me give you an injection. So the second step, almost with any degenerative condition, is always gonna be a shot. These shots are done much like epidurals when a lady is going to have a baby, and they're typically done by pain management physicians. They do not use cortisone. They use something like dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is a naturally occurring, powerful, anti-inflammatory chemical that is naturally found in your body and your body uses to decrease inflammation. The third and final phase of treatment is surgical intervention. If you have exhausted all conservative treatment options and you continue to have severe back, buttock, and leg pain, it's time to consider surgical intervention. 
The good news is that the surgeries for the repair of a spondylolisthesis are now much safe, safer, and much safer, much safer and less invasive than they used to be in the past. They can be done as an outpatient and return to normal activity can be in as little as two weeks. I have several live videos that demonstrate this. You can watch the entire surgery on my YouTube channel. And I have videos from the time I wash my hands to the time I close the surgery. And you can see everything from the point of view from the sur of the surgeon. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you think this video was useful and you would like to see more videos about minimally invasive spine surgery, please subscribe and don't forget to like. We appreciate your support.